Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to uh, how to uh, make a service highly available using a cluster. So in the previous videos we configured a cluster, we configured our infrastructure, we have two node cluster and the nodes are right here, we can see that. You can connect through, you can connect to failover cluster from any of the nodes, so I can go for, to this node and also try to connect. And here, and in this I can open, so we can configure cluster from any one of the nodes, so I'm going to open this, and once the failover cluster, uh, failover cluster manager opens, uh, all you need to do is uh, right click connect to the cluster, and once you connect to the cluster, it's not showing any, you need to know the cluster name or the IP address, so in my case, I can, I remember the name, but I can also connect through the IP address, which is 50, or we can browse and connect to this cluster name as well, so let's try to connect through this, and it is attempting to connect. You need to have access. You need to, uh, so on all three of them, I'm logged in with administrator. So in this, I can, it shows me the cluster. Now within this console, it shows me that the name of the clusters, this is the cluster name. And here it's showing that it has two networks uh, and two IPv4 networks, zero IPv6. We're not using IPv6 on this one. And here the cluster disk one is configured. So now let's make one of the service highly available. So we can go to the roles and in the roles, I can right click and I can say uh, configure role. We can also make Hyper-V uh, virtual machines highly available but they don't have Hyper-V in here. I'm going to go to configure role on this one. So once I'm here I can go to uh, in this server I can select so these are all, all of the services that can be highly available so I'm going to go into generic service and in this uh, I can select any service. So the service uh, that basically that I can make sure that service is on on any one of the servers. So uh, there are many services here. Uh, the most common service uh, that we want to be wanted to be uh, highly available is let's say print print spooler. So I'm going to go into uh, print spooler service, and we will name this as print spooler. And in here, we need to provide an IP address. So IP address for the cluster, we provided 50. In this case, I can provide 55. You can provide any available IP address from the same range. So next. And this service, the main purpose of this is this service should be on. Uh, and uh, on this one, so here uh, we are just, so nothing need to be selected. And so we just selected the service and we will finish. There are a number of ways to basically make sure, uh, I mean, we can, number of services that we can make it highly available. So this service is working, running on server number three. Now, if at any point in time, if server number three goes down, this should automatically transfer to server number two. So from our diagram, it will be something like this. So for now, uh, this service is available. So from our diagram, the service is basically available connecting to this. So users are connected here and they're using the service from this server. So this server is primary, this server is secondary. Now let's say if this service is, this you know, in order to test this, we will uh, sh either shut down the server or maybe uh, pause this server, actually this server, then the service should be automatically changed to this. So then it means that our failover cluster is working fine. So I'm gonna go here and uh, within this, uh, so going back to here, uh, on this server, so here failover cluster is on and in the roles this service is still sitting on this. So this server, I'm going to go here and pause. Pause simply means that this virtual machine is down. Instead of uh, shutting it down, I'm just powering, uh, I'm pa pausing this. So, in, so what happens is now since this machine is down, uh, here now it will realize in a in few seconds that this other server is, is not available and as soon as it realizes, it will uh, change the server to server number two. So it is just checking now this is where the hard, heartbeat network is so the, both nodes were exchanging heartbeats that the primary server is up so the server keep on asking are you available are you available that's the private uh, IP address uh, that the private network main function so since this is down and as soon as it, re it realizes it will change the server and you can see it automatically changed to 02 it realized uh, that the 03 is down so we can go to the our architecture so now the architecture is that users won't without users downtime, automatically users are connected right here. So this means that our, our failover cluster is working absolutely fine. Everything is configured in a, in a perfect manner. So this is how we can configure a failover cluster. Thank you for watching this small series. If you have any questions, you can type them in the comment and I will try to uh, reply all your reply to all your questions. Thank you.